read that you can have IH without papadema. What's the actual difference? So in the majority of our patients, people have papilledema when they're first diagnosed, so that would be IIH. There are some patients when they're first diagnosed have very high raised brain pressure, but no papilledema. And that means when we examine their eyes, we can see no evidence of nerve swelling. Now, this is a very rare type of IIH in a very rare disease. So we don't know an awful lot about why those patients are special and unique and why they don't get swelling on their nerves. The one positive thing about that condition is, is we do not feel that their vision is ever at threat from the brain pressure. They just have very severe disabling headaches. And sometimes part of the problem with those kinds of patients is it makes it really difficult to diagnose the condition. The diagnostic uh, criteria are actually quite strict for that condition as well, so we have to go through quite a process to work out, is it this IIH without papilledema? Sometimes we call it IIH WOP, W-O-P. And there is quite strict criteria which would involve doing the brain scans, and we look at the brain scans for features of raised brain pressure. We would do a lumbar puncture to confirm that the pressure was high, and we're going to talk a bit more about lumbar puncture in a minute. And then we would also do an examination to see if there was any features of double vision that we talked about, but there may or may not be. But really, you have to have all of those things together, not just a lumbar puncture pressure reading to give you the diagnosis of IH without papilledema. So it's, it's a number of things together, not a single lumbar puncture reading. And these patients really, once we've confirmed they don't have papilledema, the thing that's usually making them feel unwell is the headaches. So we then really focus in on trying to work out how to manage the headaches. And that's where we focus. And at the moment with IIH WAP, we feel the same sort of management strategies that we would employ in IIH, you know, uh, apply. So modification of the actual disease, which would be weight loss. Dr Sinclair, is it possible to have IIH without papilledema? You know, like if I was diagnosed and I've got papilledema and then it goes away, but I don't get it in the future, but I still got all the symptoms? Okay, so I think you're, you're referring to where you've had papilledema in the beginning when we diagnosed you, and then the papilledema is gone. So we don't use the word IIH WAP to describe that. IIH WAP without papilledema refers to people that have never had any papilledema ever. Okay, what you're referring to is somebody um, who's had IIH with papilledema who then has improved over a time and their pressure started to resolve and their papilledema is gradually going away and starting to resolve and may eventually go. And that's a different situation because their, their eyes did swell up in the beginning and they did have papilledema in the beginning. So once the IIH has started to slow down and calm down and the eyes are no longer at risk, we call that IIH in ocular remission to help us understand that we're not worried at the moment that they're going to lose vision and they're not going to need escalating um, interventions or increasing medical therapy. So we're happy that the eyes are no longer at risk of going blind. But we still appreciate that people often feel quite unwell at that stage and particularly with the headache side of things. I was just going to ask if the, if the, the papillodium is gone, but the IH is still there. Yes, so the, the headaches can still be very, very predominant and can still be really, really difficult for people um, in terms of going back to work, in terms of you know socialising, looking after their families. So it's a very important part and certainly something that we don't forget about in our clinics. So we're just really commenting that the eyes are no longer at risk. So let's turn our attentions now to helping the things that are making you know, our patients feel unwell, which is the headaches usually, and maybe some of the other features, you know, the low mood or the cognitive issues and those kind of things. So we'll then start to talk about how to improve headaches. Yeah. <coughs>